Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, look us up in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say this. I understand there's going to be a huge difference of opinion, right? I understand everyone in the Darren Barker, Daniel Gill fight, believes that their man won the fight, right? Quite frankly, I'll say this out the gate. You know, either guy winning the fight isn't a stretch of the imagination. Both guys gave heroic performances. No question about it. I've been looking on Twitter, and the consensus on Twitter seems to be, at least those I'm following, that Darren Barker deserved the nod. I was watching the British telecast, and of course, the British telecast before the decision was announced claimed that the consensus at ringside was 115-112 for Darren Barker. Okay, I understand. I, maybe I have a dog in this fight because, of course, before the fight, I predicted Daniel Gill would be too much for Darren Barker. But to all of those watching and scoring the fight, just consider the following, okay? If you gave Daniel Gill the 11th round, if you gave Daniel Gill the 12th round, if you gave Daniel Gill a 10 8 6th round, when Daniel Gill scored the only knockdown of the fight, and understand, that knockdown was so devastating that I'm sure. As I'm making this video, many of you are shaking your head, wondering how Darren Barker was able to continue in the fight. There were two big surprises in that round. One was that Darren Barker beat the count. That was miraculous. The second is that with no legs whatsoever, Darren Barker survived the next 30 seconds. Now, if the 6 is 10-8 for Gill, the 11th and 12th are 10-9 for Gill, right? Gill would have a four-round advantage. In the remaining nine rounds, right, nine rounds, do you feel that Darren Barker won seven of them? Let's get real here, right? Let me go one step further. That sixth round, where Barker gets dropped, did you feel that that was the first round in this fight that Daniel Gill won? Right? Quite frankly, I thought Gill was ahead in the middle of the fight. Right? I thought many of these rounds were close rounds. Let me ask a more troubling question, because we know in boxing, just like in baseball, where tie goes to the runner. We know in boxing, tie goes to the champion. He keeps his belt on a tie. Did you feel, and I know it's a heroic performance, but somebody's got to stand up and say, hey, let's think this over. Did you feel that challenger Darren Barker did enough to take Daniel Gill's title. Just food for thought. I thought the belt hung in the balance going into the 11th round. I thought the fight was nip and tuck. I thought it was close going into the 11th round. I thought to myself watching it, and I have to say I did not score it in real time, right? I thought watching it that whoever won the 11th and 12th rounds would win the fight. The champion won those rounds, right? Just look at the cleaner punches. Just look at what the action is. Who, who landed the more meaningful punches in the 11th and 12th rounds? Now, I, I simply don't know 
how anyone could score the fight 116-111. Did Darren Barker have a family member impersonate a judge for this fight? That's ridiculous. The fight I saw was nip and talk. Right? 116-111 implies that one of these guys won five more rounds than the other guy. Did you feel, going into the ninth round, that this fight was effectively over and all one of these guys had to do was stay on his feet? Because there were no knockdowns in those last four rounds. Right? There are no 10-8 rounds in those last four rounds. How could anyone score the fight 116-111? for Darren Barker. Now let me say this. Darren Barker is a guy who I've picked to win fights here online in the past. I like Darren Barker. He fought his best fight tonight. His best fight. Let me just say this though, and I know it's going to be controversial. And let me say this. He has heart. Big time heart put me down as one of those who believes that round six, quite frankly, is a fight of the year, round of the year candidate, right? Darren Barker in round six, in terms of his heart, is as good as it gets. When he gets to his feet, in my opinion, he didn't look much better than Thomas Hearns looked getting to his feet against Marvin Hagler. And yet he sucked it up, he made it out of the round, in fact, he even landed some big punches toward the end of the round, right? No question about it. But what I'm going to say next is going to upset some people. Darren Barker, quite frankly, as inspired as he was, and he was very inspired, but he's not the fighter Daniel Gill is. Daniel Gill has more of a vertical game going on. Can we agree on that? Daniel Gill defensively is better than Darren Barker. He had his hands tight for much of the fight. Daniel Gill can come in and, quite frankly, throw a better arsenal of punches up close than Darren Barker. Right? Dar Daniel Gill's uppercut landed with regularity in this fight. In terms of athlete, Daniel Gill, to me, has the quicker reflexes, has the better athleticism. Right? I thought Daniel Gill made a mistake in the sixth round. I thought he threw himself out. I thought that cost him in the seventh round. Right, He overexerted himself going for a knockout. Then he had an empty tank there. He actually needed a second win. No question about it. But Daniel Gill at his best beats Darren Barker at his best. I don't believe this was Daniel Gill's best night. I do believe. This was Darren Barker's best night. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm also someone who believes boxing's an event-based business, right? Buster Douglas only had to be better than Mike Tyson on one night of his life, the night they fought, to have legitimately beat him. But I do have a problem, and I can see the disapproval ratings <laughs> going up, the thumbs down going up as I say this next sentence. I do have a problem. With a fight this close, having the title change hands. Especially when, in my opinion, the challenger lost the last two rounds and was the only man to hit the canvas in the fight. Now, while Darren Barker looked inspired at times, did he really look that much more dominant than Daniel Gill? in the other rounds to offset a four-round disadvantage from the 6th, 11th, and 12th rounds. I question that. Let's have the discussion, right, to the Darren Barker fans. And it seemed to me Barker had thousands of people in attendance at Atlantic City, whereas Daniel Gill <laughs> seems to have only invited a few of his close friends. So to the Darren Barker fans, go ahead and leave your comments here online let us know how you scored the fight let us know and it's the biggest question in the room whether you feel your guy did enough to take the title let me also know whether you feel your guy won either the 11th or 12th rounds right clearly barker loses the 12th right the 11th round to me a little bit more nebulous but again I thought Barker lost the 11th, right? He doesn't knock down the champ, 
As you watched the first five rounds, did you feel they were asleep? As you watched round seven to ten, did you think they were asleep? Or did you feel that both guys were winning their share of the rounds? My point to you is, if Daniel Gill wins even 40% of the other rounds, given the 6th, 11th, and 12th, he should be returning home with his belt. Let's hope these guys have a rematch. In fact, if I were advising Darren Barker, I would say absolutely not. If, if the rematch does take place, though, let me be the first here to say I'll be rolling with now challenger Daniel Gill in that fight. I simply don't see how Barker could fight any better than this. And let's remember the official margin here. Two judges had the fight 114-113, right? The two sane judges, in my opinion, right? Just opinion, not statement of fact, but 116-111 is ridiculous, right? Barker takes the title by a 114-113 score on that third judge's card. I don't see how Barker tops his performance tonight. I think Daniel Gill could. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.